viewers. Welcome to the April episode of NASCOM Insights Tech Bytes. NASCOM Insights Tech Byte is back with key findings from our latest reports on the Indian technology market. Quick reminder at the start, please make sure that you have subscribed to our channel to stay updated with the most recent insights and trends in the tech industry. Just click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon without delay. Now before I invite some of our analysts to share key takeaways from our recent research, I would like to cover one of them. And that is the report that we did with, the McKins with McKinsey titled Unlocking Growth and Value Creation for Technology Services in 2024-2025. There are four key insights from this report for you. One, there will be unique growth segments for technology service providers in the next two years. The report actually highlights 10 plus distinct customer segments constituting more than 200 companies who are going to spend more than $300 billion in tech overall who are going to grow their tech spend at over 10% per year. The report also includes 20 plus high growth horizontal offerings across areas such as cloud, enterprise apps, cybersecurity, data analytics, AI, ERND, and customer experience that are expected to form a $350 billion uh, cohort of technology addressable opportunity. Second, driving value from Gen AI. Our research shows that there is almost 150 to $200 billion tech spend around reimagined and native offerings uh, driven by Gen AI by 2027. However, while new deals are factoring significant Gen AI productivity, um, at scale execution is yet to pick up space. The third trend that we see is that we have to plan for increased competition and margin pressure. We think that there would be continued acceleration in large deals driven by 2x growth in multi-tower deals. However, few of these deals are expected to be won by incumbents. So vendors need to also plan for significant rise in renewal competitive intensity along with continued pressure on margins. The fourth trend that we see is that you need to invest in differentiated partner propositions and continue to scout for strategic M&A targets. It's very important to manage partner ecosystems as their influence and contribution to services revenue opportunities increasing. We also expect M&A activity to pick up in 2024-2025 after a significant drop in deal volumes over the last two years uh, because we see corrections in valuations happening. This report is a free report and you will find the download link in the description box below. And now, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our analysts as they share takeaways from the rest of the reports released in March by NASCOM Insights. The download links for the same are in the description box. Do check them out. Joining us to share takeaways from our latest report, India GCC Trends, Quarterly Analysis Q4CY 2023 is Vandana. Uh, welcome to the show, Vandana. Thanks, Achuta. Uh, Vandana, what does this report cover? So, Achita, this report is a part of our ongoing analysis of India's GCC landscape and we are focusing on Q4 of the calendar year, uh, calendar year 2023 this time. So, this report analyzes the number of new GCCs that have opened and the existing GCCs that have expanded their presence across various sectors and locations in the country. So, as an ongoing feature, first of all, it includes the GCC Intensity Index which we have co-created with Zinov, and this is a multivariate assessment model intending to track and measure the activity of GCCs in India on a quarterly basis. So this index encompasses various parameters such as GCC establishment or expansion, industry verticals, functions, tiers, headquarter locations, India presence in terms of number of locations, the envisioned work profile, etc. Also, in this report, we have focused on the semiconductor vertical along with some case studies showcasing the innovative work in semiconductors being carried out by Indian GCC centers. Great. Can you share some key highlights from the report? Sure, sure. So, some key points include that, you know, number one, 10 new GCCs have been established uh, during Q Q4 of CY23, which is a little dip compared to 19, which happened in last quarter. So around 30% of these GCCs incidentally were in semiconductor vertical and the GCCs were established uh, primarily in tier 1 cities of Bengaluru, Chennai and uh, Pune and Hyderabad and also there was one in Bhuvaneshwar. So key names include uh, Hitachi Energy, Sandoz, DocuSign, Signature IP etc. Secondly, five existing GCCs expanded their operations in India 
primarily from the professional services vertical. Three of them expanded in tier one cities of Pune, Hyderabad and NCR and remaining two were in Coimbatore and Kolkata. Some prominent names here include Male, Toyoda Gose, KPMG, FedEx and Advantech. And lastly, some insights from the vertical deep dive on uh, semiconductors include so that India has over 55 GCCs in the semiconductor vertical and has a over 50,000 headcount. So some key hotspots within the country include Bengaluru, Hyderabad, NCR, Pune, etc. And also semiconductor GCCs in India excel in wafer design and innovation workloads with more and more GCCs opening their design centers in India. Thanks, Vandana. Great to see the semiconductor sector expanding in India. Uh, viewers, this is a free report and the download link is below in the description box. Now we have Neha to discuss key highlights from the compendium of digital skilling initiatives and the best practices document that we recently released uh, uh, last month. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, Neha. Thanks, Asika. So, Neha, uh, uh, do share, do give us a little bit of insight on what exactly is this compendium all about? Sure. So NASCOM conducted its first ever Digital Skill Award 2023, which focused on best practices across tech companies with respect to digital skilling. On the, uh, for these awards, we got 250 plus case study submissions from more than 100 companies. The winners for these awards were facilitated at our NASDAQ event in November 2023. Now, in our endeavor to share these best practices which we received during the submissions, we wanted uh, that uh, you know the ecosystem should know you know what is being done across the industry so we have compiled the 20 plus interesting case studies in this compendium and these case studies have also been uh, put across different five categories which were in line with our awards so those categories are digital skilling deep, deep tech skilling academic partnerships learning platforms social skillings and you know it features all the uh, uh, great case studies that we have seen from companies like Infosys, Sonata, Global Logic, Dell, Genpak, TCS, Wipro, Society Generali, Pega Systems, WNS, and LNT to name a few. There are more such uh, case studies that we have covered across companies. Now this compendium will serve as a guide to understand how companies have worked on various spheres of digital skilling and how they have designed various initiatives to overcome their digital skilling challenges. Great. Um, and what have been key learnings for the overall tech industry from these case studies? Uh, you know, can you can you share something on those? Sure. Ones? So uh, just a few of them. You know, the important ones that I could uh, say that you know we saw a lot of interesting metrics that came up, and some of the key highlights that we saw were that on an average, you know, the companies invest 60 to 100 hours per employee per year on digital skilling. If you look at you know the kind of platforms used, so a lot of internal platforms are being used for foundational digital skilling. While when you look at uh, expert digital skilling, companies do rely more on the external platforms. Now, also 63% of the organization indicated that you know they are doing academic partnerships. Now, if you look at partnerships, also when it's for a niche uh, segment of employees, say up to five percent, the focus is more on expert and advanced skilling. While when these partnerships cater to more than fifty percent of the employees, it's more on imparting foundational skills. Uh, Forty-five percent of the organization said that they have more than ten academic partnerships, while the remaining said they have somewhere between one to ten partnerships. And if you look at the uh, sphere of technologies covered, nearly twenty-five technologies are being targeted through this digital skilling interventions. Now, if you look at the top ones, it was web and mobile development, cloud computing, AI, ML, and NLP. Lastly, you know, what we also saw on the social skilling front that employees are spending up to 40 hours in a year on digital skilling, which is related to CSR and uh, related activities. So that was broadly uh, the insights that we saw. Thanks for giving us the highlights, Neha. Uh, viewers, this is a great report in case you want to revamp your uh, skilling agenda. Uh, it's a free report. Uh, download link is in the description box below. For our next report, the quarterly industry review Q3 FY24, we have Prajwal sharing some key highlights from the report. Welcome to Tech Bytes, Prajwal. Thanks, Achuta. So, Prajwal, can you give us a quick summary of uh, what you have seen in the technology spending uh, globally and overall contract uh, you know, information in uh, this third quarter of FY24? Sure, Achuta. So according to IDC, worldwide tech spending grew slower in CY 2023 at 4.4% year-on-year, led downward by degrowth in hardware and devices. 
The spending increase was primarily driven by enterprise software and IT services spend that grew nearly 1.1x of the total tech spending. Talking about contracts, according to ISG, global ACVs of US dollar 23.4 billion were reported in Q4 CY 2023 with growth similar to last quarter and lower by 3.3% year on year. Managed services reduced by 2.9% to US dollar 10 billion during the quarter. IT outsourcing ACV was up by 12% while BPO was down by 25%. As a service ACV increased by 2.3% to US dollar 13.4 billion in Q4 uh, CY 2023 led by software as a service that increased by 4% while infrastructure as a service declined by 10%. So thanks for setting the context from a global angle, uh, Prajwal. What does this actually mean for the Indian tech sector uh, and the companies that are there? You know, uh, Also, any, any, any information on the hiring uh, trends in the sector? Sure, Achuta. So uh, for the overall tech industry revenue, for the sample set of companies that we analyzed, that grew 0.5% quarter on quarter and 1.4% year on year in reported currency terms. Now in terms of geography, in Q3 FY24, EMEA and India grew sequentially, while North America witnessed a quarter on quarter decline. Now in terms of verticals, energy and utilities, manufacturing, healthcare and telecom vertical witnessed a sequential revenue growth, while BFSI, retail, travel and hospitality witnessed a decline in this quarter. Uh, for our industry segments, uh, pure play BP, uh, pure play ERND revenue continues to grow, albeit at a slow slower rate compared to Q2 FY24, while pure play BPM revenues grew only slightly quarter on quarter. Now, talking about the net hiring, Achuta, it remained muted. The employee base witnessed a quarter on quarter decline as companies focused on improving the current utilization levels. Uh, now, talking about attrition, Achuta, uh, that maintained its downward trend at 15.1% compared to 16.8% in Q2 FY24. Great. Thanks, Prajwal. Viewers, this report is free for NASCOM and nominally priced for non-NASCOM members, free for NASCOM members. Uh, download link is in the description box below. Now, before we end, I'd like to welcome Khyati from a marketing team to provide a concise summary of our recent thought leadership sessions and also explain why you should be watching them. Khyati, over to you. Thanks, Achita. We had a number of interesting and insightful sessions this month. A tech talk session was recorded featuring Mr. Brajesh Singh, President India at Arthur D. Little, discussing NASCOM Arthur D. Little India's digital public infrastructure, accelerating India's digital inclusion. The session offers key insights into India's digital public infrastructure and its pivotal role in the country's recent transformative journey. We have also uploaded a video series breaking down key insights from the 2024 NASCOM Strategic Review Report. We hosted a panel discussion on effectively navigating the shift in future work models featuring HR leaders from Genpact, CGI, Simpress India and Tata Technologies. The discussion focused on organizational strategies for managing the transition including return to office plans and hybrid work arrangements. Lastly, we premiered a Tech Talk session recorded on the sidelines of the NASCOM SME Confluence 2024 with Mr. Sriram Subramanya, Founder, MD and CEO, Integra Software Services Private Limited. The discussion centered on how tech SMEs could leverage the potential of Gen AI. Thanks, Kathy. That's all that we have for this episode. Thank you for joining us today. You can find all our reports on the NASCOM community and on the NASCOM website. We have an exciting lineup of reports scheduled for release in the upcoming month, uh, which are covering topics such as, uh, you know, uh, digital readiness, emerging risks, and advancement in digital technology. To receive instant notifications on uh, when we post a new video on our channel, be sure to click the bell icon. If you found this video insightful, please share it with your friends and colleagues. We eagerly anticipate your feedback. See you next month.